Hey, Mark, thanks for joining me again. Um, you know, I know this has been an issue for a lot of insurance agencies, you know, where we are starting to see a lot of their growth is kind of stagnant. And a lot of agencies are looking to get back into sales. Um, so, you know, I want to kind of talk a little bit about that. Hopefully we can kind of get some agencies back on the right foot. Um, so I appreciate you taking a few minutes to kind of meet with me. Um, so why don't we go back, if you wouldn't mind, kind of educate me a little bit as well. You know, when you started your agency, you know, what did sales look like? Well, back in the old days, Zach, uh, as you regularly point out to me, <laughs> you know, really, when I first started, um, you know, actually in uh, direct sales was in the late 80s and back then it was doing it old school you know uh, you would go out and knock on doors and in commercial insurance uh, to a certain extent that still exists you know picking up the phone getting through the gatekeeper looking for smoke coming out of chimneys banging on doors um, and, and that's the way we did it you know personal lines tried to do it you know by direct solicitation although that has always been problematic um, or, you know, really doing it through networking, you know, setting up centers of influences and, and those still have practical uses. Uh, you know, if you're a personalized producer to try to go out and establish relationships, you know, much along the lines of, you know, hey, you're a successful business person. I really have admired you for a long period of time. And, you know, how do you attract business? And, you know, I would like to look for the same types of clients you are and hopefully develop those relationships where they say, hey, if you're in the need of insurance, Mark Riley you know, is, is a solid place to go. Um, but as we've discovered, you know, uh, so sales is evolving. Uh, and, you know, maybe some of the old techniques would work, but not quite as well. Today, the consumer is a lot more educated. And so when they are looking for insurance, when they're on that buyer's journey, which we use that term a lot, the buyer's journey, we're on, when they're on that journey, they're looking uh, for solutions. And, you know, with us, they still come to see us in large numbers uh, to try to constitute the deal because they're still dealing with sophisticated contracts and they want a human being to, to help them ink that final signature. Uh, so from that standpoint, it really is important for us to have a realization that we need to have ways to sell differently and, and more importantly, as agency owners or sales managers, the way to support our salespeople to make sure that our goals are realistic and the platforms in which we position them are realistic to sell. So what's, what has happened over the last, you know, I don't know, so many years where, you know, a lot of agencies kind of aren't doing that. You know, it's, it's, it seems to me, especially when we, when we meet with a lot of agencies, they're almost like, well, we're here, we're answering calls from clients and that's it. You know, where, how did it end up getting to that point? Well, like I said, the world's changed. And, you know, when you think of comp competition, um, in a way, you know, we used to view competition in first lines that maybe be the direct sales company in the next town, State Farm or Nationwide. Um, but it's changed that, you know, our competitors are people like Amazon and Walmart. And, you know, even though Amazon isn't directly in the insurance market anymore, what they've done is trained the public on how to sell. So if you think of that as, you know, they've used uh, intelligence to try to decide what kind of person you are and what you might be interested in. And I think it's time for agents to position themselves in the same way as to have some information and technology that lets them know where the mind space is of that consumer. Um, and there's a lot of different tools that you can use to do that. Like I said, uh, consumers are a lot more sophisticated, have done a lot more research and you know, your job as opposed to being a advocate of your product is to be a li liaison to connect the consumer to your product. Now, is there still a need then uh, for agents to still knock on doors and well yes um, in, in two different senses is especially in commercial insurance uh, it still works that way but commercial insurance is also you know you have buyers that are out there saying that they've done their research 
and they're inviting you in as opposed to you inviting yourself in. Um, you know, imagine again, if I knock on your door when you're trying to work on end of the month things and I try to distract you with insurance, not a good fit. And I don't know when your end of the month is. It might be on the seventh day of the month. Um, so, you know, trying to position yourself that, you know, every once in a while when you knock on a door, you just happen to fall into that bed of roses that, oh yeah, we were just reading our insurance, but that's few and far between. Right. So that's a good band-aid, knock on doors, but also start building, building your representation that when they're out there searching, they find you. When they ask a question to Google, you pop up with the answer. Yeah, that, that actually goes, kind of answers my, uh, my next question, which was, um, you know, what should agencies do now who, you know, they were used to traditional ways of selling, but you know, right now, you know, with the country not completely reopened yet, what can they do if they can't go out and shake hands? That's a great question. Uh, you know, the, the idea behind that is right now, uh, it's kind of scary. You know, the economy is sort of in free fall. We have somewhat of an installation in the insurance industry because insurance is still needed. Uh, now's a time with your existing clientele to reestablish value. You know, try to find out if their policy still matches their exposure. Uh, if they're not driving as far to work, you see all these ads on now where insurance companies are rebating money. You know, now's a good time to add that dialogue because, you know, it sounds great that we're returning 20% of the premium. So people all of a sudden they realize for three months, they're going to save seven bucks. And they, you know, it sounds great on, on, uh, if you're watching, uh, America's got talent and all state has a commercial, but in reality it's, it's few dollars. So having a, a larger impact by dealing with your existing clients from a retention standpoint, there's an old saying that premium is only important in the absence of value. So dollars are only important in the absence of value. So establishing value is really good. Now, in addition, because people are sort of uneasy on where this economy is going to be going, and there's a lot of projections that it's going to be, you know, two, three, four years for us to recover from what's happening this year. So if you're looking for new business, the door is wide open because people are uneasy. And if your agency has not established value, then you're going to be more receptive to my interaction with you. So sharing knowledge, whether it's through email blasts or LinkedIn, uh, even Facebook, you know, showing value, what to do. And of course, everybody's posting COVID-19, COVID-19. So we're almost becoming numb to that. But the idea is to, to make sure your message is received by the right people. Going back again to using tools that are out there is trying to find targeted people by the use of, you know, engines that will put, put you in front of people that are looking for what you had to sell, uh, yeah. which is a shameless plug. I, I think that, you know, we've done an outstanding job at InBuzz providing knowledge base information that, re, you know, recommend people to, you know, go out to our blog, both our marketing and our sales to find out about the buyer's journey and how to place yourself there. Um, you know, there's tools for retargeting. So people visit your site and they walk away for whatever reason. There's tools that can say, hey, 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 look, come back here. Come back here. Need to talk to you. <laughs> right. And, you know, those are very powerful tools. Uh, people are using them. So you should be one of those people. Yeah. And I think it's pretty interesting too, how much the lines, uh, I mean, you talked a lot about how, you know, agencies as a whole should have this, you know, essentially a digital presence because people are out there, you know, as we, as we talk about sales, how that line has blurred between, um, yes, you need to sell, you need to sell, but there also needs to be this, you know, digital marketing piece, or at least this digital piece of they people need to be able to research. They need to be able to find you because, you know, they're not always going to want to answer your phone call when they're in the middle of cooking dinner or when they're with the client or, you know, whatever else they're doing. So, um, I did want to ask because, you know, I've, for the tools on our website, we get a lot of people, you know, we see their sales issues and a lot of people have an issue with, with their producers or, you know, the agency not selling well enough, not performing well enough. And so I was kind of thinking, I was wondering, is it kind of like the agency's lack of support or culture for, you know, more of a sales culture or is it really salespeople just not performing? Is it like a hiring issue? Is it a, a cultural issue? What's, where's the, yeah, where's I would, the problem? I would, I would say that, you know, it's one of those things that, that 
as sales becomes more sophisticated, your culture needs to become more sophisticated, not overburdening people, but, but you know, putting roadmaps in place for people. Uh, and some of the tools that we've got, we've got, for example, the income reality worksheet, which is really a good tool for a sales manager or owner to sit down with their sales rep producer and, and both come to an agreement on what's a realistic, you know, you've got a producer says, I want to earn $100,000. Okay, in reality, you write on average $11,000 accounts and you renew about 92% of your business. In order to do that, this is what you have to do. And then you get to the, the bottom line, you're saying, that means you have to call on 35 people a day. Oh, not real. <laughs> so, so the idea of using the income reality worksheet. In addition, sitting down, we've got the re, uh, return on investment calculator where you can sit there with the producer and show them what they need to do to bring their position within your agency to profitability. And lastly, some of the tools in a sales standpoint that are very helpful is, is having a CRM with automated workflows. That if somebody looks at your website and fills in a form, what happens over the next 14 days? How often are they going to be spurned to be contacted? Um, what happens after they're contacted? You know, what's the turnaround time to provide solutions and to standardize the sales practice? You know, people, a lot of times, sales producers, if you are not in a sophisticated pattern, you have a sales meeting, they'll use terms like, oh, I got a lot of things in the hopper. Oh, my pipeline's got a bunch of stuff going on. Well, bunch and lot is not really something that you can drill down on. So having a tool where everybody can see what everybody's doing is more accountability. Uh, in, in this day and age, accountability is very important, both for, you know, you promised me this and I promised you that and making sure that everybody's keeping their promises. Gotcha. So the last question that I kind of want to leave, uh, kind of want to leave the video on this is, um, you know, what is, what is it going to take for insurance agencies to get back? So, you know, if, if you're, you know, if you could speak to an agent right now, say they were sitting across the desk from you and they're like, you know, Mark, I'm just, we've gotten a bad habit of just, being order takers, and we're not really sure how to sell anymore. You know, where do we start? What's the first step we should take? Well, from an agency standpoint is developing that culture of, you know, the old saying, when the going gets tough, you know, dig in, retool, reculture, you know, move forward. Uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback on some of the stuff we've done recently that it is that, you know, we're never going to go back to exactly the way it was in say 2019. So now is the time to just grasp, you know, the, you know, the, the string on the horse and start to gallop, you know, slowly, uh, you know, start building brand awareness, start answering consumer questions, doing whatever you have to do to be found by them. And you then also, you know, encourage your, uh, your staff, your sales staff, to be involved in networking, either on a one-to-one -one basis or on a broader basis, sharing knowledge and making people realize that you're the trusted advisor that they want to be with through these trying times. Um, you know, really, when you have a discussion with people and you start talking and they understand more about our product, a lot of times money doesn't become as big of an issue. And it's all about... I people are not going to search unless they're uncomfortable with you. So that's what I would say to do right now is to reach out to who you've got and also start building inroads to people you don't have to try to make them find you uh, or you sort of find them. Going back to having tools, it's always nice when you have a tool that shows you this person's been looking at you and they spent three minutes on your page about microbrewery. Uh, and so you know, you don't have to waste your time on the 900 people that don't want to talk to you. You can focus on the 13 people that do want to talk. Good. Thanks. So, yeah, you know, I, I think for a lot of people, they're just, there's a lot of options and a lot of ways to get started. Um, and I think like what you said is, you know, they kind of just got to get started, kind of got to take a step. I don't want to say a step of faith, but at least a step forward you know, into that place and just try something, start, you know, um, I, I, we're seeing right now, especially in the business world, how well just creative solutions are being accepted of people just wanting to get out 
getting their brand image out, wanting to connect with people. And it's, and it's a much more natural way to sell. Well, um, you know, last, lastly, one of the things on a lot of the, the uh, Facebook is big with private groups that we talk about, you know, where do you find leads? Who do I hire to bring me leads and stuff like that? I really think at the end of the day, it's your effort that's going to bring the leads in. And so having the right tools in place with the right attitude of your sales staff, it's going to start bringing you opportunities like you've never seen before. Uh, but you have to really asking who's going to do it for me. If somebody else can do it for you, ultimately they're going to do it for themselves. Right. So thank you, Mark. That's a, <laughs> that's a good place to leave it. Um, and I just want to say, Hey, everybody, if you guys like these videos, I know we've been getting a lot of, um, you know, good comments and things from it. So if you guys like these short videos, just let us know and we'll, and we'll keep cranking them out for you guys and let us know if there's anything uh, we can help you with, or if you want to hop on the phone for a few minutes, just let us know. All right. Thanks, Mark. Hey, we'll talk to you later. All right. Good talking to you, Zach.